And we're going to look at summation notation. Um, it says definition, the sum of the first n terms of a sequence is represented by the summation notation, fancy, um, right here. It's uh, using sigma, the Greek letter sigma, uh, which for math we're representing it to take a sum. Um, on the bottom you have i equals 1. On top you have an n. This says a sub i, and it's equal to whatever number is down here, you plug it in, and so it's a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus dot 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 all the way to whatever this value on top is, so we stop with that a sub n. For this notation, um, we have right here where i represents the index of summation Um, the number one, in this case, it's down here on the bottom of the sigma. That's going to be your lower limit of summation. So it's whatever values down here is what you start um, to plug in with. This doesn't need to be a one. It could be zero. It could be two, three. It could be any value. So again, whatever's on the bottom, that's the number you're going to start plugging in with. And then n, we're going to call it the upper limit of summation. And the upper value is going to be what you stop with. So again, it could go 1 to 3. So you would only plug in 1, then 2, then 3, add them up. Or it could go from like 5 to 8, plug in 5, then 6, then 7, then 8. So that will tell you what number to stop plugging in with. So, example, expand the summation notation and evaluate the sum. So we have uh, sigma on the bottom, you have i equals 1, and then on top your upper limit of summation is 6, and your um, equation or expression is 2i squared. So first we'll plug in 1 for i and square it, then you're plugging in 2 plug in 3, keep going, until you get to that upper value of, in this case, 6. And go ahead and simplify. So we have 2 plus 8 plus 18 plus 32 plus 50 plus 72. Add them all up, and I got 182 as your total sum. So this would be the expanded summation notation, and then here's your actual sum once you add those terms up that are in this series. In this one, um, part B, we have K now is going to be our uh, letter we're using for our index of summation. Um, K, it starts off with a lower limit of 3 and an upper limit of 5, and then again, here's your expression you're plugging into, so we'll start by plugging in 3 for K. Then you're going to plug in 4. Then we're going to stop by plugging in 5. And when we work these out, and keep simplifying. I just want to emphasize, again, your lower limit of summation is 3, your upper limit of summation is 5, so you're plugging in 3, then 4, then 5, and that's just making three terms. So some people um, will look at this and go, oh, that's how many terms are in this series, 
but it's not, it's again, whatever value you're starting with, plug in and then you're stopping. So in this case, we had three terms. So we can go ahead and find our sum, 5 plus 13 and 29, and I have 47. All right, um, for part C, it says um, I equals 1, and then you're stopping at 5, and your um, formula is just 4. And here in this summation, your variable is I. In the last summation, with respect to this uh, sigma, your variable was K. And again, for part C, if you guys notice, there's no variable. You don't have I in this expression. It's just a constant. So you're just getting for each time when you're plugging in. I mean, again, there's nowhere to plug into. But this would be your A sub 1, your A sub 2, A sub 3, A sub 4, and A sub 5. Anytime you have a constant, it's just going to be equal to the constant times the number of terms. In this case, because you're starting at 1 and stopping at 5, that's going to be 5 terms or just the value 20. Uh, be careful if you're, again, multiplying it out instead of just adding 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. Again, that many times, be careful if it starts at 3 and stops at 5. Because if it starts at 3 and stops at 5, 3, 4, 5, that means you're just going to take 4 and times by 3 because there'd be 3 terms. But in this case, it was 20. This example says express the sum using summation notation. So we're going backwards in a sense. You're given 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared dot 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 plus 9 squared. So we're going to write sigma. We can go ahead and, head, go ahead and just use i. Um, if you look here, you have 1, then you're plugging in 2, then you're plugging in 3. So our lower index would be 1. It stops by plugging in 9, so your upper index would be 9. And then um, the formula that essentially we're plugging into would be i squared, because each time it's 1 squared, then 2 squared. And again, the pluses mean that you're using the sigma. So there's your answer for summation notation for this series. For part B, we have 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth, all the way to 1 over 64. So to get this first term of just a 1, to make that happen, we're actually going to start with 0 and then stop at 6. You plug in 0, 2 to the 0 is 1, making the fraction just a value of 1, or the ratio a value of 1. Then plug in 1, and so then you're, that's how you're getting the 1 half. Plug in 2 next, and 1 over 2 squared makes the 4. Then you would plug in 3, so that's how you're getting 1 over 8. And again, you want to look at that and say, what would you plug into this that would kick out a 1 over 64? Um, 2 to the 6th power will give you 1 over, the 1 over 2 to the 6th power gives you 1 over 64.